uh, this month, uh, at the end of this month, uh, will will be Easter, which is next Sunday. Uh, but but as, I, as he was ministering to me, he said to me that the month of April will be the month of royalty, or the month of royalty, I meant to say. Amen? Amen. So the month of April coming up, just in a few days from now, God is asking us to live as royalty to him. Amen? Amen. And that's actually what I did uh, a teaching. That's actually what I, I taught on the teaching for my podcast, which is the sermon today, which is titled, You Are Royalty to His Heavenly Royal Highness. Amen? Amen. You are royalty to His Heavenly Royal Highness. And His Heavenly Royal Highness, which is King Jesus, the King of Glory, and the Lord of Hosts. Amen? Amen. So preparing this, uh, if you look at the, the acronym, His Heavenly Royal Highness, which is H-H-R-H. So preparing this sermon, uh, you know, I always uh, come across our own culture, the Nigerian culture, especially uh, the Igbo culture, uh, where uh, they always have the kings in certain areas in Nigeria. Amen? And whenever I see a poster, I'll always look at the person's name that's under his face. In fact, the title will say His Royal Highness, which is H-R-H. -H. His Royal Highness as a this person. Amen? Amen? Which means he happens to be the king of that certain area in Nigeria. Uh, especially uh, where we come from in Mbano. I know there's a, a, a king that's reigning there as of now. Amen? But that king, that particular king, that's a, that's a physical king. Amen? Now, there are many kings that we have heard of throughout the Bible. And there are many kings that, that we may have heard of. Especially uh, this artist that I always listen to uh, right from childhood, even till today, that I still listen to uh, his music. Uh, you know, about 14 years ago uh, is, is his passing uh, Michael Jackson uh, which he got the title the king of pop and pop music because everything that he does is is uh, for him to make a difference in the world amen, amen. and I think that's the reason why he uh, wrote this song with Lionel Richie, We Are the World. We Are the World. So, for us as believers, yes, we, we may be called to be something great. But most importantly, we are known as royalty to His Heavenly Royal Highness. Amen? His heavenly royal highness known as Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go on to the text. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 2. And the three exegetical big ideas that we're going to look into the three exegetical big ideas in being royalty to God's royal highness. The first one is the kingship inquiry from the Lord. 
The second one is the kindness of the Lord as his royalty and the promise granted to us as God's royalty. Amen? Amen. So the first exegetical big idea, the kingship inquiry from the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 2 from verses 1 to 4, and I'll read. It happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to any of the any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there to so David went up there and his two wives also Ahinoam the Jezreelites the Jezreelites and Abigail the widow of Nabal in Carmelite of Nabal the Carmel, the Carmelites and David brought up the men who are with him, every man with his household. So they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Verse 4. Then the men of Judah came, and they were anointed, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, the men of Jabez Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. Praise God. This is the account of the second book of Samuel, the prophet. The same prophet who not just anointed David, but also confirmed David as the king of Israel. And we see here that David has been officially anointed as the king of Judah. And Judah is one of those cities in Jerusalem. If we look in the history. And we see here that David inquired of the Lord. Asking him, where should we go up to? Where do we go to? Or where should I go up to? To receive my royalty in you. Amen? Amen. So God told David, go to Hebron. Now, Hebron is also a suburb, which we all know that we get this, this term Hebrew. Think about it. Hebron, Hebrew, Hebron, Hebrew, which is within that city of Jerusalem as of now, Jerusalem today. Hallelujah. Amen. So as David went up with, uh, with these two women, there he met the men of Judah, and he was anointed officially as the king. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's where David, not only he's known as the man after God's own heart, but he received his royalty in God to be the king. And he's also been told that the men, Jabesh, the men of Jabesh Gilead were the ones who buried Saul, and this is the Saul, this is the same Saul that he, that he was reigning Israel, but he had no humility. So that's so that's how everything happened to him, and at the end we see that Saul has already been dead. And that word inquire 
or inquire. In fact, there's two spellings. Inquire with the letter I, inquire with the letter E. The Hebrew word for that is sha'al or sha'el, which means to ask or investigate. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is what we notice here. Since God is the king of everything, we ought to inquire of him in what we do because he investigates our hearts. Amen? Amen. We have to inquire of the Lord. As a matter of fact, we have to be loyal to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you see how the word royal and loyal, you see how they rhyme. Amen? To show royalty to God, you have to be loyal and show inquiry to him. Amen? Amen. The second thing we learn from this, as his royalty to his royal highness, the Lord owns the kingdom and he rules over the nations. We can find that in Psalms 22 verse 28. So going to the second exegetical big idea. The kindness of the Lord as his royalty. So if we read from verses 5 to 7 of that same first, of that same second Samuel chapter 2 from verses 5 to 7, we see here that David sent these men after meeting them, and at the same time, he showed kindness. He showed kindness. The same kindness that God showed David. Even when, when we looked at the verse that we just sang, Psalm 51. The same kindness that God showed David, he showed to these men. After receiving the news that... Saul is dead and he's been buried. And this is what David said in verse 7. It says, Now therefore let your hands be strengthened and be violent, for your master Saul is dead. And also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. So already, as an official king of Israel, David, David has a lot of responsibility to do as the king. Amen? Amen? And that's the first thing that he did, to show kindness. That's the Hebrew word, hesed, which means compassion or mercy. Amen? Amen. So this is what we also notice from here. As the royalties to God's royal kindness. The same loyalty and kindness that God shows us is what we ought to show to others. And another thing we notice, as the royalty of God, our worship to him is important because he is Hosanna in the highest from the kingdom of David that is blessed. Amen? Amen? And we just read that during the, the Palm Liturgy. Uh, if we look at Mark 11 verses 9 and 10, we just read that earlier as we walked around uh, the complex. And it talks about the people of God worshiping Jesus as the king. Claiming and proclaiming him as Hosanna in the highest. And that word Hosanna is another Hebrew word which, which means please deliver or please save. And sometimes you would ask yourself this. Have I ever met anybody who bears the name Hosanna? Amen? Amen. Like have you ever have you ever met anyone whose name is Hosanna? 
R really? Wow. Because there, there are many names that are pertaining, you know, like names of God that are, that are in the Bible, and a lot of people are bearing that name. Some bear Messiah, some bear Emmanuel, and some will bear the name Hallelujah. Amen. But that, but that, that will be for that, that will be for another sermon that I will preach. Amen. Our worship to God is important because he is Hosanna in the highest. Amen? Amen. He is the royal highness. The heavenly royal highness. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So why are we called royalty to his heavenly royal highness? Why are we why are we called that? Or why, why are we known as that? Royalty. And I've been listening to this song from uh, Tasha Cobbs Leonard, which she titled it Royalty, which actually uh, correlates to what I'm speaking on right now. Because of the love of God that has been shown to us, even, even in our sin, God has called us royalty because of his kingship. Amen? Amen? And as of right now, we're about to step into uh, Holy Week, which is also known as Passion Week. So it's important for us to live as the royalty to God's kingship. Amen? Amen? Because if you're if you don't feel like you're you're royal, then you'll be asking yourself so many questions. But we understand that God has called us royalty to his presence, amen? amen. And even God has called even men of God to be royal to him as his servants. Amen? Amen. Like, let's bring it to the Anglican Church. The archbishops that run the provinces, like if you look at their name, it will say his grace. Amen? Amen. His grace, the most reverend this person. Or his grace, the most reverend Dr. Henry Ndukuba, the primate for Church of Nigeria. Now, he doesn't have grace. It's only God that gives him that grace. Amen? Amen. Now, the bishops that run the diocese, that like their names will, will say his lordship. Amen? Amen? Like his lordship, this person, right reverend, this person. So when we meet them in person, when we meet the archbishop, we address him as his grace. When we meet the bishop in person, we address him as your lordship. I know the, the core Nigerians will, will say, my lord bishop. Amen? Amen? But they are royalty to God, not royalty to themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even as the clergy, God has called us to be royal to him and not royal to ourselves. Amen? Amen. The third and the last exegetical big idea. The promise granted to us as God's royalty. And if we look at Romans Chapter 4. I want someone to read that quickly. Romans chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Romans 4, 13 to 18. Because the law walketh what? For here no 
Thanks be to God. The Apostle Paul, who wrote the letter to the Roman church, talks about the promise, the promise that's granted through faith. So this is the promise that's granted to us as God's royalty. Amen? Paul mentioned about us being the heir, not, not just of the world, but the heir of Abraham. Amen? Amen? And we see why he's known as the father of all nations. Hallelujah. Amen. He's known as the father of all nations because of the faith and because of the royalty of God through us. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are two promises that are granted to us as God's royalty. The first one is from verses, verses 13 to 15. We are known as the heir through the faith of Abraham, which there are no effects. Hallelujah. Amen. So that word heir the Greek word for that is klero, kleromonio. That's the Greek word. Klero, kleromon, kleromonero. I hope I said that right. Uh, that's the Greek word. Uh, in, in English, it means inheritance or descendant. Amen? Amen? You can even find that at the last at, at, uh, that, at uh, verse 18. We'll find that word. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But we are known as the faith. We are known as the royalty because of the heir. We are the heir of, of Abraham, which there are no effects. And the last one, the second one, is from verses 16 to 18. Through the faith of Abraham, as the father of all nations, we receive the hope from God that brings all things into existence. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet Samuel, which we read in 2 Samuel chapter 2, King David, according to Psalms, and the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, all taught us that his royalty to his royal highness, that as, that as his royalty to his royal highness, the Lord owns the kingdoms and he rules over the nations. And the same royal and the same loyalty and kindness that God shows us is what we ought to show others. Because our worship to God, our worship to him is important because he is Hosanna in the highest from the kingdom of David that is blessed. And we ought to inquire of him in what we do because he investigates our hearts. The Apostle Paul, where we read in Romans, 
lets us know that God has granted us his promises as his royalty. On this day that we celebrate Palm Sunday, we ought to remind ourselves that the King of kings and the Lord of lords has made us royalty. He has made us royalty, and we ought to live as royal believers on earth. Amen? Amen. Now, just like, as I said uh, about the church, you know, like the clergymen, we're called to be royal to God, not to ourselves. Amen? But we have to live this royal life to his heavenly royal highness. I'll close with a quote by the American businesswoman and also the founder of the Mary Kay Cosmetics. I know ladies, y'all are familiar with that. Amen? Amen. The Mary Kay uh, Cosmetics. Uh, so the CEO, uh, her name is Mary Kay Ash. Uh, uh, God rest her soul. Uh, it's been a few years since she passed. And this is what she says. We treat our people like royalty. If you honor and serve the people who work for you, they will honor and serve you. Amen? Amen. So as the royalty of God, Treat and honor people who work with you. The ones that, that are actually loyal to God and loyal to the service that you provide to them. Amen? Amen. And at the end, that same honor will be given back to you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we come to you to thank you for your word. Thank you, O God, for calling us as royalty to you, O God. And we decree and declare that we will live royal and stay loyal to you, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask, Lord, that you will have your way in the rest of the service today. And we continue to hail you as the royal Highness in heaven, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We ask that you receive all glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for those who are going through cases. Those who, those who are going through one case or the other. And I'm reminded of the verse that says, Vindicate me, O oh God. And plead my cause. Persons will say, plead my case. Some will say, plead the fifth against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. That's in Psalms 43, verse 1. We are praying, oh God, that those who are going through cases, that you, oh God, will vindicate them, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, every false accusation from the enemy that's been set over their lives, we ask, oh God, that you vindicate them. Take away every false accusation, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we come against, we come against the person who is in charge of every case, oh God. If they are dragging their feet, control their feet. Whatever it is, they're holding down their case. Know how innocent these people are. We ask, oh God, that you remove every satanic mind and vindicate them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we are asking, Lord. We're asking, oh God, that you will set your people free, oh God. Set your people free, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will take away anything that will try 
to mess up their success, oh God. We ask, Lord, that you will set your people free. Whoever it is that's holding down their cases, oh God, if they do not set the person free, if they do not vindicate your people, may they never know peace, oh God. 